Oh my gosh. You're all here so early and I love you too. Whoever said that, I love you right back. I love you right back. Yes, I love you right back. I love all of you. Oh my gosh, we're all here. I kind of thought I was speaking early in the morning. I thought maybe nobody would wake up. But this is a great crowd and um, just absolutely honored to be here. Lee, thank you for the introduction. Dr. Carson, you're amazing. Senator Langford, thank you for your leadership. I can't imagine Dr. Carson with a temper, can you? I just learned something about him. I can't even fathom that he's the most calm, beautiful soul. I, one of the most calm, beautiful souls I've ever been around. I had a great chance to talk to him. And I'm actually reassured. I think we're, I think we're going through an amazing time right now, and we're gonna come out the winners of this. But then he reassured me. So I'm like, this was great. I, I'm out here now, it's, it's Friday. And how many of you realize this is the 20th Friday before the election? We got 20 more Fridays to get through. Who's ready to give it everything you got for 20 more weeks? All right. Who's ready to take the hill and never surrender? Okay, now we're talking. Me too. And, and we can't take that hill without God. We just can't do it. I mean, faith and freedom go together. Faith and freedom, that's why it's, it's here somewhere. I think it's faith and freedom or faith and freedom. Without our freedom, we can't share our faith. Do we realize what's at stake right now? I'm not just talking about a presidential election. I'm not just talking about the U.S. Senate. I, I actually think we're going to win all of that. But if we don't, if we don't stand up for the next 20 Fridays and the next 20 weeks and do everything we can, how do we share our beliefs? As Christians, we need to share the gospel. What other country can we share the gospel in? Not if we turn into China, we can't, because we have the First Amendment. And the very first part of the First Amendment, it's not about the free press, it's not about free speech, it's about freedom of religion. The ability to worship our God, the ability to share our faith. And that First Amendment, that Constitution is so important. That's what's at stake. And that's why we have to go out for the next 20 weeks and talk to our friends at church. Get there a little early, sit down in the sit your butt down and start talking politics at church. I know, you're gonna, you're gonna ruffle some feathers, but are you guys willing to do that? Yes. Okay. We're in, a, we're in a really perilous moment. And I, one thing I've learned, thankfully, at the age, the ripe age of 50, I, I really took a shift back to God. I realized I can't do it alone. And I took a really hardcore shift back to God. Isn't God amazing? Because his plans are always so much better than ours. You probably know my story how for 30 years I worked in the media. I was one of the fair and honest ones. And during COVID, I had a wake-up call and said, this isn't even journalism anymore. This is just full-on propaganda and half-truths. We all know that's a fancy way of saying a big old fat lie, right? It's, when, when you don't want to admit you lied, you could say, well, I gave you just a half-truth, but it's really a lie. And when I realized the half-truths were what we were putting out that was dividing our country, dividing my community, pushing fear into people's lives, pushing isolation uh, from our relatives, I realized I don't want any part of that, and I walked away from my career. I walked away from a seven-figure contract. That was not an easy thing to do. But I knew that once I realized what I was doing was not right, it was immoral, if I continued to do that, that made me immoral. And I didn't want to be immoral, because I'll tell you what, what mattered more than a paycheck was the meeting I'm going to have someday with this guy. I want that one to go well. Just like Dr. Carson, I'm not so worried about being called names down here. I want to get a big old welcome and a hug when I go up to heaven. That's what I want. And so I walked away, but I'll never forget, just before, once you walk away from the job and tell your boss, you know, take this job and shove it, you don't really get to go back and go, I was just kidding, April Fools, <laughs> April Fools, I didn't mean it. So there was a little moment of fear because I wasn't walking away from a small paycheck, I was walking away from a big paycheck where I never worried about anything. And I remember right before I made that step, I, I was praying at my desk in my office and I said, God, I'm... I'm a little nervous that what if I regret this three, four months down the road, six months down the road? If a year from now I go, oh my gosh, how stupid was I? That was stupid. 
And I said, give me some answers. I, want, I need some calm right now. And at that time, I grabbed my Bible. And you may have heard this if you, if you read my book. I literally opened the Bible. I didn't know where I was opening it. I just opened it down. I dropped my finger down. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. You bring nothing into this world, and it is for certain you take nothing out. Can you believe that is the answer God gave me? I said, got it loud and clear. I'm out. And I tell you this story because I know the next five months, actually we're four and a half months out from the election. It's going to be dicey. It's going to be scary. There's going to be sacrifice we have to make. We're going to have to make decisions that we know are the right decision, but they're not the easy decision. And I just want you to know, look what God had planned for me. I thought I was going to go just live a quiet life, get out of the public eye. I'd been in the public eye for 30 years, and I was actually kind of looking forward to having a quiet life. And God said, no, 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 I've got a, I've got a few things I have planned for you before that quiet life. I'm going to throw you into the middle of politics. You're going to end up in the middle of the political world. You're going to help lead a movement in Arizona. You're going to fight for election integrity. You're going to be called every name in the book. The media is going to hate you. The media is going to write 100% negative coverage of you. You're going to become friends with a guy named President Donald J. Trump. You're going to run for office. You're going to run for another office. And you're going to actually win. And I really believe we are. Now, I want to tell you that not everything goes smoothly when even, even when, and I think sometimes we pray for what we want. How many of you are a little bit guilty of that, even though we're Christians? Who, sometimes we pray for what we want, and we're hoping it's also what God wants. Oh, boy, I've learned. I've, I've stopped doing that, because you know what I, I was doing? I was praying God for, I was saying, I need strength, God. Please give me strength. Well, God is amazing. He does give you what you ask for. And how do you get strength? By difficult circumstances to strengthen you up. And then I realized I keep praying for strength, so I keep getting difficult circumstances. <laughs> so I finally said, God, I'm strong enough, because I am really strong. <laughs> I want, you know what I want the next five months? Because I know I'm going to use all that strength that God gave me. What I want in the next five months is to never lose the joy of being a child of God. I don't want to lose that. Don't let what's evil in this world take our joy away. That's what bugs the evil more than anything. Satan hates it when we're happy. He hates it when we're happy. So, let's, so now I'm praying that I can find joy in everything and find the blessings we see some blessings, and there's so many blessings that we're not seeing right now. And so I want to make sure that we're seeing all of the blessings um, that are out there. And then I, I, I thought of one thing this morning. I only have a, two minutes left. I hope I can do this. David and Goliath really hit me this morning. You know, the Israelites were fighting for 40 days, and this giant Goliath was harassing them for 40 days. They were dressed for battle, but they really weren't fighting. They were afraid. They were filled with fear. And it took a guy named David. He was just basically a shepherd. He was delivering groceries when he saw this giant. And he realized that the Israelites were not really fighting. They were, dressed for, they were dressed for the fight. They were talking the big game. They were saying everything they needed to say, just like we are right now. You get a lot of people who say they're going to do this, and we're, we're, we're fighting, and we're gonna do, but they're not doing anything. And he came in and with a, with a, with a stone became the hero. And he brought down Goliath and really um, changed the course of history. So it doesn't, sometimes it's one simple act that can change the course of, it, of history, but not if you're not involved. So I'm asking you with my 45 seconds left, who's willing to get involved in a bigger way than you are right now? Right? Okay. That sounded like a Monday morning I'm willing to get involved. That sounded Monday morning-ish to me. Think about how strong we are individually. God made us strong. We are, we are created in, in his vision. We're God's children. Think how much, how much stronger we are when we're together. When one person stands up, a David stands up and throws a rock and brings down a giant, it encourages another David to stand up and another person to stand up. And next thing you know, another person is standing up doing something courageous. And when we stand up as Americans 
and link arms, nothing can stop us. I'm going to end with this. We're, there's some division in the Republican Party. Are we willing to work through that and bring our fellow brothers and sisters who are also Republican together into the fold? I am. I want to unify. Hey, listen. I want to bring in independents and Democrats. I want the disaffected Democrats in. Somebody said, you're willing to bring disaffected Democrats in, but you don't want to bring traditional Republicans? No, I want the whole country together. I want the whole country together. And I want to bring him back. And when I say him back, I know you're thinking Donald J. Trump. I do want to bring Donald J. Trump back, by the way. But I want to bring him back. We got to bring him back into our culture, into our lives, into our hearts and souls. And then also, let's work to bring Donald J. Trump back on November 5th. Can we do that? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Faith and Freedom. Thank you, America. Let's save this country and make November 5th the day we take back America. Thank you so much for having me. I love you guys. Thank you so much.